Welcome back. In the previous video, we were talking about this concept of pressure and how pressure was really um, this ratio of force divided by area. And we were really studying two types of fluids, right? Liquids and gases. And we found out that for liquids, gravity is usually the dominant factor in determining the pressure anywhere inside of that body of liquid. And for gases, it's actually the temperature. Now, we also talked about kind of gases at a small scale as well as a very large scale. So at a very small scale, uh, the temperature of a gas is really going to determine its pressure. But if we looked at a container that was really, really big, so this is, you know, planet Earth, and our container has a height of, well, many, many feet or meters or miles above the surface of the Earth, we can see that now gravity really becomes the dominant factor here, particularly for gases. And we also talked about this concept of the standard atmospheric pressure, 1 atm, is equal to 101.3 kilopascal. So that is the pressure at the average sea level line here on Earth. So in this video, I really want to talk about how we can determine the pressure at any point inside of some body of liquid. So we're gonna look specifically at liquids, right? So if I scroll down here and I drew some kind of a container, and this container was filled with some type of a liquid, how could we determine the pressure at the very bottom of this body of fluid? How could we determine the pressure at the very top? How could we determine the pressure anywhere in between the top and the bottom of this body of liquid, right? So how do we do that? Well, we know that gravity plays a large role in determining the pressure of liquids, right? But in order to kind of come to the answer that we're looking for, we have to make an assumption. And that assumption is this body of liquid is in static equilibrium. So what does this term static equilibrium mean? Well, it means that the fluid has come to rest. It's not moving. It's not being shaken around. There's no external force excitation that's causing the liquid to move, right? It's just sitting very still. It's in static equilibrium. It's not moving. And if we make this assumption, then we can come to this concept of hydrostatic pressure. And all hydrostatic pressure is, is really just the pressure inside of a body of liquid at any point. So how do we determine this? Well, we have this container of liquid, right? So I'm going to redraw this, but in kind of a three dimensional shape. So oof. bear with me, but there is the same container that's housing this liquid. So this is some type of liquid and it's sitting inside of this container. So this is the 2D view and this is the 3D view. Well, I said that this body of liquid is in hydrostatic equilibrium. So that means any piece of this liquid is always going to be in static equilibrium. And that means if I drew a section of this liquid, right here in the middle or really anywhere inside of this container at a certain depth D, then this red piece of liquid is going to be in static equilibrium just like all of the other liquid inside of this container. But again, what does this mean? It simply means that all the forces that are acting on this body of liquid, they are equal to zero, right? It's in static equilibrium. So if you added in the forces in all directions on this body of water or this body of liquid, this would be in static equilibrium. The sum of the forces on this body is going to equal zero. So I'm going to redraw that same red piece that we cut out here from this liquid. This is depth D. Now the question is, what are the forces that are acting on this red piece of liquid? Well, if you remember, pressure is really equal to force over area. And if we rewrote this, we could say that area times 
pressure is equal to the force, right? So there's some kind of a force being applied here at the top, at the bottom, and then the body of liquid also has a force, right? Mg. So let's do kind of the easy ones for figure out what the forces are. So for the actual body of water, uh, at the centroid of this uh, piece of mass, the force there acting downward is going to be mass times gravity. So whatever the mass of this piece of liquid is times gravity, that is acting down. Well, now the second piece is, well, we want to determine the pressure at depth D, right? So if there's pressure here at the very bottom of this piece of mass, then there obviously must be a force, right? So there's some type of force here, and that force is equal to A times P, right? The area times the pressure. What is the area? Well, the area is this cross-sectional area here, right? So pressure is really equal to the force, the normal force, the perpendicular force that's acting on this area, right? Well, what about the top? I did say that this container is open to the top, and in the last video we talked about this thing called atmospheric pressure, right? So even if the container is open to the atmosphere, there is still some sort of initial pressure, or P0, and that is really equal to this 101.3 kilopascals in this case. So we can safely assume that the force at the very top is going to be P0 times A where P0 is this atmospheric pressure, whatever that value is, times the cross-sectional area. So great, we have our three forces. We also know that because this body of mass is in static equilibrium, the forces in all direction, in this case just the vertical, those forces are going to equal zero. So let's actually write up this equation. So at the very top, we have this force that's equal to P naught times A. So I'm gonna say P naught times A, and that is acting downward, right? So I'm gonna put a negative sign there. This mass times gravity, that is another force that's acting downward, so that's gonna be a minus Mg. And then at the very bottom, we have this AP or PA, doesn't matter, and that is acting upward, so that's gonna be a plus sign. I'll just say pressure times area is equal to zero, right? And remember, the whole question here is what is the pressure at any depth D? So we're really trying to determine what this P value is, right? This P value here. So we can do some algebra here. I can actually add P naught A minus Mg to the other side and I get this equation. So pressure times area is equal to P naught times A plus mass times gravity, right? So we're getting kind of closer to determining what this P value is, right? That P is gonna give us the pressure at any depth D. Okay, so now things get interesting. We are left at this equation, but we have this area in some of the terms and not this mass times gravity. If we could somehow get rid of area, we could just determine what P is, right? If area is gone, then on the left-hand side, all we're gonna be left with is P, the pressure at any depth. Well, if you remember back from a few videos, this is mass, right? And what do we know about mass as it pertains to fluids? Well, we studied something called mass density, which was denoted by rho, and I'm sorry if that looks very, very close to AP. I'll try to distinguish those two characters as best I can. But if you remember, our mass density rho was equal to how much mass there is per unit of volume. If I were to rewrite this equation, I could bring volume to the other side. So rho times volume is equal to mass. And if I plug in this section or this term here for mass, then I'm going to get a brand new equation. So Pressure times area is equal to P naught times area plus mass, which is rho times V, the mass density times the volume, times gravity. Okay, well, we're getting closer. 
let's look at V. What is V? V is the volume of the mass that we're studying. If we look back at this diagram here, we know that we have this cross-sectional area A, and we know for a cylindrical volume here, it's just that cross-sectional, the circular cross-sectional area A times D, right? That is the height for this particular piece of mass. So the volume here is really this area times D. So what if I took this and I plugged it in for V here? Well, I would be left with pressure times area is equal to P naught times area plus rho times AD times gravity. Okay, this is good because now we have a A term in each one of these terms. If I were to divide by area on all sides, right, then all these A terms would cancel out and I would be left with pressure is equal to P naught plus rho times D times gravity. And there you go. That is the equation to find pressure at any depth D from a defined surface or some point. Now the interesting thing here is that pressure does not depend on area, right? There is no area term in any one of these. There is no volume term in any one of these. So what this equation is telling us is that it doesn't matter how big this area is. The only thing that pressure depends on is really this initial pressure at the top, the mass density of the liquid that we're studying, the depth that we're trying to find the pressure at, and the gravitational constant. And this right here is the equation for hydrostatic pressure.